individual rights and liberty. Sadly, once again, we are faced with a struggling economy, high unemployment, crippling energy costs, and an uncertain future. Washington and its crony capitalist allies on Wall Street have conspired to pick winners and losers, and we're all paying the price. And now, with tens of millions unemployed, four dollar a gallon gasoline, tens of trillion dollars in national debt shackling our children and grandchildren, what do we hear from our supposed leaders in Washington, D.C.? Nothing. Are they offering meaningful solutions? No. Are they uniting our country? No. Are they leading? No. Can we do better? Yes. Can we do better? Yes. I think so too. We can let America's future fade, or we can stand up and fight back. And now with Senator Snow's announcement earlier this year, I made my decision. And for the sake of my two teenage children, I've decided to fight back. And I'm standing before you today to ask humbly for your help and support. Join me today. For me, it all starts with one word. Freedom. Yes. Yeah. We must once again embrace freedom as the core principle defining our nation. It is freedom that motivates all of you to be here at the convention center this weekend when there's a beautiful day outdoors. Yeah. <laughs> it's the quest for freedom that unites us. Whether you've been coming to these conventions for decades, as I have, or whether this is your first, it is our quest for freedom that will take this country back. 
Now I want to welcome the many new people and the tremendous energy that we've seen at the convention this weekend. Many of you are here. In my view, you are an important part of our party's renewal, and you are here because, like me, you believe in freedom. I am worried that our kids and grandkids will not have the same blessings of freedom that we've enjoyed. Their freedom is endangered. Their futures have been shackled by the reckless irresponsibility of big government and big business in bed together, and it must end. Yeah. have rejected this corrupting relationship since our founding. And it was this, along with taxation without representation, that caused committed patriots in December of 1773 to dump tea in Boston Harbor. Now their bravery and commitment inspire us still today, and that will be the reason we get back to what made this country great. Now listen to me. For the past four years, the U.S. Senate, under Harry Reid, has passed $4,000 billion of IOUs onto our children. America has now $16 trillion in national debt. Over the past decade, career politicians in both parties have turned a blind eye to the mounting obligations of the federal employee retirement system, $4 trillion in Social Security, $17 trillion, and in Medicare, $89 trillion. Wow. Enough is enough. Yeah. Yeah. Nine months ago, our nation's storied credit rating was downgraded. Let's not forget it. Even the Chinese have decided to stop, borrow, stop buying our bonds. You know, in fact, the only bank foolish enough to continue to buy our bonds? It's the Federal Reserve. Yeah, yeah. This will not end well. Now, as a businessman confronted with such circumstances in my company, I would recognize the crisis, work up an emergency plan, and call an emergency meeting of my board of directors, which holds me accountable. But what does the U.S. Senate do? Refuse to pass a budget for three years. Go on with business as usual. Take an extended holiday. My friends, make no mistake, this election here in Maine for the United States Senate is about the survival of our republic. Yeah. Now, I, I like, genuinely like, my opponents in this race. For the first time in decades, we finally have Republicans in the important roles of Attorney General, of State Treasurer, and of Secretary of State. They are doing a great job for the people of Maine, and I am working hard each and every day to ensure that they don't go anywhere. out of government, and I have decades-long experience holding large institution, institutions accountable to the people they are designed to serve. Whether it's big government answering to us taxpayers, or corporate chieftains being held accountable to investors, my experience is uniquely tailored for the fight before us, and I have proven that I will not back down in a fight. Yeah. <laughs> Next U.S. Senator, I will work tirelessly with you to restore America's promise to our kids and our grandkids. And here is where I stand. There are no sacred cows when it comes to spending cuts. Everything is on the table. The Senate passes a budget or they don't get paid. a balanced budget amendment to the U.S. Constitution, and I've been speaking in support of that for 20 years. I am not new to that fight. We need to repeal Obamacare. You'll, you'll, hear, you'll hear arguments. You'll hear arguments 
about its constitutionality. But for me, this is very simple. Any new federal program that requires thousands of additional IRS agents is a loser. Yeah. We need to make this country energy independent. The time for talk on this issue is over. Let's get on with it. Let's build the Keystone Pipeline. Yes. Let's drill where it makes sense. Yeah. And let's stop picking winners and losers like Solyndra and certain companies in the wind industry. Yeah. And the era of corporate welfare must end. This government has spent billions on bailouts and billions more to giant agribusiness, which have hurt our small farmers and left us with ethanol in the tank. Yeah, yes. Above all, we must preserve and protect individual liberties enshrined in our Bill of Rights. And remember, for me, and I think for all of you, the Constitution exists not to define the rights of the people, but to limit the powers of government. This includes the Second Amendment. I am, always have been, and always will be a reliable supporter of our right to bear arms. Now I know many of you are undecided about whom to support in this primary. The stakes are high. It could determine the balance of power in the United States Senate. The Democrats are so worried about this that they will have two candidates on the ballot. I want you to know, I am the Republican who will beat them both. someone who has stood up to Angus King, privately and publicly, I am well suited to tell the rest of the story. The story that the media will not tell you, I will. I have fought Angus King's unconstitutional and out-of-control spending on the floor of the main Senate. Angus King wants to emphasize partisan gridlock because he doesn't want to discuss that the main budget nearly doubled under his two terms, or that he began an unprecedented expansion of welfare, a mess that Governor Paul LePage is still trying to clean up, or that he violated the Constitution to borrow even more money. I have proven that I can work across party lines even at the height of partisanship. Angus King wants, to, wants you to think he can, but when he was governor, he advanced majority budgets with the Democrats, he has endorsed President Obama, and Chuck Schumer has endorsed him. And why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he? We know Chuck Schumer loves big spending, big government, crony capitalist liberals. We can't afford to continue corporate bailouts, failed stimulus plans, and unconscionable deficit spending. We must stand up and win back our country. Folks, we are in this fight together, each and every one of us. It is our time, it is our moment. I say it is time to stand up for our children, for our values, for our country. It is time to stand up for freedom. Stand up with me, join my campaign, and let's move this country forward again. Yeah.